would be, this house believes the guys have it too easy. Before we begin, though, just a couple quick announcements. First off, as of last week, we have feedback forms in the back of your papers. There should be pens going around, or you can put a pen somewhere. If you could fill those out and drop them in the uh, feedback box into the ballot box after the debate, that would be that would be really helpful. Um, we got a, quite a few last week, and it was really quite helpful. So we're going to continue doing that throughout this term. It's not that we're going to take a pen. Anyway, also after the debate tonight, we have sake tasting in the bar. It's actually in the room. The spaces are limited to 28 people, and there are quite a few tickets taken already. So if you're keen to do that, as soon as the main debate ends, head right down to the blue room. It's about 10 quid, I think, for the sake tasting for the entire sake experience. Um, after the emergency debate, I'll do sort of a couple weeks ahead after the business needs to do. Without further ado, though, we're going to start the debate. The first speaker will be Alex Porter, a first year PPS student from Murray Edwards. Again, the motion is this house to leave to the guys kind of too easy. Um, hi, um, I'm sorry I talked a little bit about this festival. I'm taking quite a serious tone to the debate because it seems to me that this isn't actually that much of a laughing matter. Um, it seems to me that there is like a really obvious argument to be made that biologically men do have it easier. Um, I'm not going to go on about periods and pregnancy, I'm leaving that to Dan, but um, <laughs> I do think that it's important to address the physical differences between men and women because it's the physical differences between us that actually create the innate inequality between men and women which affects pretty much all the relationships in society. Um, so I don't think it's possible to address the issue without acknowledging the fact that because of these biological differences, men do predominantly hold more power in sexual relationships. Um, Susan Brown Miller claimed that ultimately patriarchy is based on the fact that men have the ability to rape women. And obviously, modern society isn't a culture of rape like some prehistoric societies. But women do remain in a weaker position, and I argue that this is due to the dual power of land culture and launch culture, which both work to reduce women to their biological functions. Um, launch culture is easily the most identifiable of these two. Um, and one strong example of it, of it is um, the pornographic content that's increasingly demeaning and increasingly available to everyone. And I think it plays a powerful role in demeaning women and also affecting just generally how people think about power relationships and sexual relationships. And I don't want to sound like I'm telling anyone how they should react to their sex lives at all, but um, I mean, by all means, do whatever feel like. But um, I do think that portrayals. Um, in porn pornography are damaging to, as they treat women, basically reducing them only to their biological functions and their body's value, and sometimes they don't even credit them with that. Um, so the commodification of women's bodies through porn is then compounded by the softer branch culture, which is in the rest of society, um, especially by people like lipstick feminists, who argue that women do have power because they can use their good looks to get ahead. Uh, for example, I'm sure many of you are familiar with Samantha Brick's work and her arguments that flirting is a perfectly acceptable use of female power and power. Um, and while you might take this as a kind of way to think women have more power, they have an extra resource available to them, but in fact, the fact that they have to resort to this at all just points to the fact that this is a male dominated society and it's a man's world where men are ultimately the judges, and so of course appearance factors into their judgments but it's the men making them. Um, finally, I'd like to point out the, um, what I see as the modern manifestation of patriarchy in general, which I call lad culture. Um, I'd argue that not only are women disadvantaged in lad culture, giving men an unnatural advantage, but also that they're systematically um, excluded from it on every level. And so this might seem like quite a minor point in the grand scheme of things, but in fact, it, it perpetuates on every single level, from just being excluded to, from lads night at the pub to like kind of banter culture in the House of Commons. So um, while men can see each other as equals and all on the same playing field, women kind of only get access through being the sexualised other and this and the ones that do manage to make their way into the men's serious discussions are often just written off like they have a femininity, their sexuality they don't completely like um, I'm sure most of you saw a girl's comments about Mary Beard, who's of course an incredibly intelligent woman, 
and because she does choose not to buy into the sexualised nature of femininity, she gets massively criticised and her opinion is disregarded. Um, so this culture of gender segregation, understandably, has really tangible consequences. Uh, for example, in the continual unequal division of labour in the home, uh, making women's lives harder as they're expected to take on dual roles of responsibility, both as one of the major breadwinners of the household, and still taking on the most of domestic work and labour, uh, childcare. Um, so arguably men in modern society do want to feel this burden, but I'd stress that grown-up lad culture offers men more of a release from these responsibilities than women are offered. For example, lad culture for men, grown-up men, gives them the opportunity to take part in sports and it's taken very seriously, whereas women's kind of leisure pursuits like just coffee mornings and shopping, things that women like to take part in, are uh, really trivialised in like patriarchal society. So I'd say that this just perpetuates the undervaluing of women in society. So in conclusion I would argue that men do have it too easy in modern society because well or at least they have it easier than women. Biological sex differences are compounded by society, enforcing gender roles on both men and women, leading to a society in which women are continually thought of as inferior and inherently different. By having it easier than women, by definition, men have it too easy. Because what we should be aiming for is complete equality, where no one has it easier than anyone else, at least not in terms of how their gender affects it. So I would urge you to propose the motion. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Our first speaker in opposition tonight will be Ingram Davidson, a first year history student from Trinity. Ingram? It's hard to be an alpha male. <laughs> Dear. Um, I know all about diversity. I mean, having grown up in Surrey, I'm part of the semi detached massive. <laughs> My towering five foot seven frame, pre raphaelite curves, purple laying biceps, and legs that just gone forever, life is unbearable. Sadly, there is more to life than being really, really ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I do feel inherently objected by in recent polls, women themselves have in fact looked at men as a sense of a physical entity. Spaniards were seen as the great sons of the world, just so. Uh, but at the same point, Germans were clinically sort of criticised. English was said to be too lazy, and Swedish finished too quickly, and the Americans were apparently too bad. This means that we have to criticise our own identity and our own sense of self worth. Me personally, I can't wear v neck jumpers for fear of people staring my cleavage, or <laughs> colour jumpers for fear of being seen somewhat camp. In fact, we cannot wear silk, and silk is in fact a brilliant substance I've had. <laughs> Maybe you know, some cuddle thing. When Jenna felt that lonely, I'm like, they're all alone. <laughs> so, I thought I would make a statement tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I would say that no, I should start with this criticism of silk. <laughs> and we're going to start with this. So, I'd just like to go through one of my days as, uh, as an apparent alpha male, and hopefully, this is after my many activities. Uh, so, I'm going to try to say this in a lavish voice. If you can keep your head and all about you, I'm using theirs and blame it on you. 
If you can trust yourself and no one doubts you, you make lads they're doubting too. This is impossible! I'm sorry, this is impossible. <laughs> you were taking them up really, really badly, but I'll be getting on to later on. Say, Martin, we're shut up like this, okay? Now, let's just showcase some of these and see whether they work. <laughs> No, no response. I blame the chat up line and not me. <laughs> but no, the whole point is that you, know, sort of, you can get some more harmless ones than you can get. So, sort of, you know, from the great philosopher Funky D, are you going to ban them? And the joke that doesn't work. And I'm frankly shocked and this is Then you have to go over to say, okay, we go to the great habitat of the human student, Cynthia, and say, dancing, I'm quite a fan of the terms of dance, it's very much an expressive way to deal with one's emotions. But then say, if I want to go to Zumba and harness set the Z. Then not. And then when it comes to this grumpiness, it's a force upon us by your society. I won't say that I'm a grumpy. This is actually um, <laughs> fantastic. Brilliant. Um, and then as people, you know, got this sharp and tirade, they, they pop their collar because everyone knows this is the dorsal fin of the land. <laughs> 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 Then we have to look at various other points. Now, I'm a historian, so I'm not being a historian at that If we have to make one boundary, um, the vote, the, before the vote came in, I mean, it was set time, death and deals, about the rainbows, world peace, and then afterwards, the Middle East crisis, World War II. I'm a historian, that's why I'm saying And then we come to the process of problems that sort of filter are expected to um, admire, that say, I can't admire Hugh Grant's vlogging there and sort of comes to say, I'm just so terribly sorry for whatever I did, but I'm incredibly attractive. Um, whereas I got to like Mega Sharp as a giant octopus who would snakes on a train in Piranha Street on D, which is a film by the way, you can find time watch or something. <laughs> what I will say is that I'm going to give a speech, a gladiator speech, to show you what is expected from us in the National Post. Five weeks from now, I will be passing my main ball ticket. Imagine where you will be, and if you will be so. Hold your beer, chant with me. You find yourself alone, running on a treadmill with no sun on your face. Do not be troubled, for you are in the gym and you are already a lad. Brothers, what we do in life echoes in eternity. And for the women, I mean to say this. I'm just a boy. <laughs> Standing in front of the audience. <laughs> asking them to love you. <laughs> I hope too. Thank you very much, Ingram. Now we get on to the floor speeches. I have to step out briefly. So Joanna Mobis, who is our diversity officer, will chair this speech. Thank you.
trousers. Um, <laughs> and I, I think that, in general, like excluding the skinny jean trend among men, which obviously is very difficult for them, women's trousers are generally tighter. And that's annoying. But, yeah, yeah. Oh, this is the point I actually want to make, that the, uh, the pockets are much smaller, which makes it really hard to keep things in. And I think it's a massive social disadvantage, because it means you either have to carry a massive handbag, or you end up doing what almost everyone does, and put it in your bra and you might see these all over this. Yeah, it falls out, or else you've broken yourself in front of everyone trying to find your own key. Or, you know, yeah, that's pretty yeah, much it. Oh, yeah. yeah, and then there's a moment when the phone goes off inside your bra, and you have to catch your bike. So, yeah, I think trousers are really good. Most or least 
us, and we should just focus on yeah, making everything more really cool friendly. Thank you.
And I think the concluding point must be, and I don't mean this in a derogatory, derogatory way, boys are generally simpler creatures. And I don't know about I mean it turns out. They're happy when they're happy. They're sad, they're sad. Things are pretty black and white, pretty easy going. For girls, there's always this desire to find a subtext, to find a meaning, to read into things, to have these high expectations of, of what you expect, of what you think you deserve. And it's easier to be a man because they're willing to accept life as it is. They're willing to accept that this is what happens, that's how we go. And, and I think it is true to say that females do get more emotionally attached to things. I was near tears because I've just lost my purse. I'm sure a boy who uses his wallet is not going to be the same. So I think, just to conclude, that girls do have it harder, but that doesn't necessarily mean that boys have it better. Thank you. And to close the debate off, we have Matt Lloyd, who's a fifth-year veterinarian from Burton. Matt? Right. Um, men do not have it easy. There are many reasons why. A high suicide rate, a high proportion of prisoners, alcoholics, drug addicts, homeless population is mainly male. Um, lower life expectancy, um, and all the issues surrounding parental rights. I'm not going to discuss any of those things because I thought this was a comedy. <laughs> Instead, I'm going to talk about dating. I know we've already briefly covered that. Um, I'm a bit of an expert in this <laughs> I don't know if any of you watch BBC Three, but um, last Monday I was on episode five of World Series of Dating. Um, well, I finished fourth, out of six. <laughs> Wasn't ideal, um, but the winner of that particular program had a set of lips to tune to his neck. Now, if that's what women are looking for, then dating is so impossible. With that alone, makes men's lives hell. Um, and dating itself isn't fair. You have to pay for meals. Meals are deceptively expensive. <laughs> <laughs> you see, threat of rejection when you ask someone out, which is much worse than the question of do you want to go out when you have to go yes or no. Um, Point of information. Yeah. Um, wouldn't you say that it makes women's lives more difficult because they don't feel that they have the power to take them on in a relationship and do the asking out and pay for meals? Like that makes them impotent in relationships. Well, they could have paid for me. Equally, they could ask me, but I have been asked out by girls twice, but they look awful. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to move on. But, um, there are loads of things that are socially acceptable for women to do, but not men. Um, I, I saw this blog today that had a list of creepy traits that men show. And um, they were disgusting, kind of lingus, fair enough. Inappropriate staring, fair enough. Foot fetishes, fair enough. And owning a cat. <laughs> Why is it not so protected from man to own a cat? <laughs> Should we have to own a cat without being assumed to be an evil villain? <laughs> So we've discussed handbags briefly already, but actually I think quite a lot of men would appreciate that sort of item. I mean, normally pockets do do the trick, you've just got a wallet, a phone, keys, it's fine. As long as you have more stuff that you need to keep on you, like a diary, a selection of coloured pens, <laughs> a small bottle of mineral water, preferably velvet, <laughs> sunglasses, lip gloss, sorry, lip salve, <laughs> mascara, guy liner, and a pink cardigan. You need to like a cover on these things. Um, other things that aren't socially acceptable for men to do, cry. When I cried in up at the cinema, <laughs> everyone laughed at me. You see a woman crying on the street, everyone gives them sympathy. It's not that. <laughs> One person felt <laughs> And this is my controversial statement. If you're a woman, it's easier to choose something to wear in the Middle Eastern country. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
the other way from the controversy. Um, <laughs> so the shaving is easier. Um, I did my research on this. Eleven percent of women shave every day. Seventy-five percent of men do. Now I, I decided I couldn't be wrong. But this is now results of me looking a bit like a weasel. <laughs> you shouldn't have to choose between irritating your skin and looking like a small carnivorous man. <laughs> If women dress up as Jack Sparrow or um, male astronaut or a builder, it's fine. No one judges me. When I dressed up as Britney Spears, they were one more time ago. Everyone judged me. It definitely wasn't considered socially acceptable. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll summarise now. Um, going to an earlier point, women being hard to understand does not make their lives easier. It makes men's lives a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> when you can't understand something, it's not a good thing. You don't go, oh, I don't know, never mind. You think, crap, I'm out of my debt here. <laughs> um, and my final point, it is really hard being a man. I should know I've kind of failed. <laughs> So, without further ado, I thank you, I thank the speakers, and the main debate.